Growing up in Australia, you only really heard about two races, and that was uh, the Tour de France and Paris Roubaix. One lap of the track. Matthew Heyman has won Paris Roubaix. Unbelievable. We've had a mass crash behind, a mass crash behind several riders and a couple of them not looking too good, I'm afraid. I remember quite clearly watching the opening classic of the season, Het Newsblad, and uh, I was back in Australia watching it late at, late at night and uh, we saw Matt crash in that race and, and the camera panned in on Matt. And normally when Matt crashes, he gets up and, and rides straight away. But this time he got up, walked to the side of the road and sat down and held his arm. And that was where I knew it's not going to be good. And everyone realised what it meant for the season. And the talk was uh, the classics are out of the picture now. One rider from Orica Green Edge, with the size of the frame, you'd have to guess that it's Matt Heyman. First thing that goes through your head is all of that work is just like, all of that work, all of that work. And then to get the x-rays and, yeah, there was just a, a crack through the, um, through the radius. The doctor comes in and says, yeah, six weeks, um, you won't be riding. And that was the, the hospital doctor and, and the team doctor confirmed that and, and pretty much said, look, that's, that's your classics done. I think most bike riders, when they're either not on a bike or not at a race, they don't feel like they're a bike rider. And when those things are taken away from you, it's pretty hard. For the days after, I gave Matt a bit of space and um, I was expecting an email or a call from Matt saying, you know, I've had this crash, um, Matt, classics are over, let's reevaluate the goals for the year. But the the message I got was, um, I've broken my arm, but I'm on the train now, and what are we going to do? You know, in hindsight, obviously I'm, I'm so glad I didn't, but logically, when you've had a break like that, you probably should just, um, you know, take some time off, relax a bit, and, and set new goals. He, he sent me a photo of himself on the trainer with his arm on the ladder in front of him, and he said that someone had recommended this program Swift, and it might be something of interest that we could use straight away. I could see that it was uh, very engaging for the athlete and, and motivating. At first I suggested, okay, let's do some one and a half or two hour sessions on it. And after the first few days, Matt was like, no, I can do double sessions on this, I'm enjoying it. And I think even the first time I used it, um, you know, still probably five, six days after breaking my arm and it's still in a cast and I'm going for intermediate sprints and I'm trying to beat times up climbs and um, heart rate was absolutely through the roof and that's when I thought this, this, is, this is motivational and this is, yeah, just, uh, it's a distraction from the actual training that you're doing and it's more like you, you're going for a ride. And it allowed us to really replicate the demands of racing and I think that was the key that it gave us is that we could be very specific with the training that we put in place and replicate exactly what we had to do. It ended up being a blessing in disguise. It was a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster, you know, doing those things and asking yourself, are you just pure crazy or um, is this going to amount to anything? So we then spent the next three to four weeks on the trainer and we did certain efforts that replicated the cobbles of Roubaix and I think to be in a closed environment and to have, to have the athlete thinking about Roubaix and imagining themselves riding there, that, that imagery is very important. I don't think Matt's position in the team was guaranteed until a week before Paris-Roubaix. They, they weren't sure if he had the fitness to warrant racing and there was also the risk if he crashed on a, a recently broken arm that it could do some serious damage. So there was quite a bit of hesitation and discussion about should Matt even start Paris-Roubaix. When I talk about Roubaix, and, and it's a, it's the race, the race that you know is something special. It, it, just saying the words then gives me goosebumps. Uh, and it is hard. It's it's hard, and there's a lot of cobbles and it's rough. But I also say, you know, in all the cycling I do, it's the one place I want to be on that day. 
in April. So we got to Rebay and I said, you know, do the tyres fit in that bike? And, and the team uh, said, yeah, yeah, this, this um, version of the foil, we can fit the big, big tyres in, so that's not a problem. Um, but we've got these two other bikes for you. I said, look, I'm going to ride that bike. I know it works. I've raced this last weekend in Spain on it. I feel comfortable on it. And I took a bit of a risk with the wheels too. I said, put in the 50s and I'm going to ride the deep section wheels. And it's not the safest option, but I've got nothing to lose really. His win was being there in the first place, being on the start line. So that was an achievement in itself. But he knew he was up for a good day and just wanted to be part of the race. Big one for us, uh, Paris-Roubaix um, 2016. It'll be my 15th attempt at winning. Like my dad used to say, you know, got to be in it to win it. There was two or three guys designated to get to try and have one of our team represented in the breakaway and we we're racing for a good couple of hours. Um, and I saw an opportunity there and thought, well, I'm, I'm still fresh. I haven't been jumping for, for 70 odd K trying to get in any moves and, and I jumped and, and got away. Come on, Matthew, come on, come on, come on, come on. You play well and we can see uh, Heyman coming back here. Heyman that's... returning, what a ride this has been. Yeah, that's, I guess, the first time I started to believe when you come back to those guys in, in the final of the race and they started to believe too, maybe. Come on, Matt, come on, come on, come on. You know, these are guys I grew up with, Matt, and now he's my director, and Lorenzo's Belgian, he knows what these races are, and he knows the history behind them. And Heyman's gone over the top of Tomaga, 38 seconds back to anybody that matters. This is the leading group of five. And Heyman riding maybe potentially one of the best Roubaix, and that's his life, and that says a lot for number 15. I wasn't really thinking, just doing. Go, Matt! Oh, oh. 2K to go! Six metres, seven metres. Matthew Heyman has attacked over the four time winner, Tom Bowden. The other three are looking at each other. Bowden, he's struggling to come back in the wheel. Matt Heyman, he's reaching out towards the trophy. Here is a golden opportunity. If you're Matthew Heyman now, you've got to stay in the wheel. Still in his best 10 seconds. Fresh, he does it now. When he came into the velodrome, uh, it was just himself and Boonen and Set Van Mark, and I was thinking, hey, okay, this is great, we're going to get a podium here, podium's guaranteed. But then two other riders tacked onto the back of him on the velodrome, and it was a five up sprint. Now we go round to the bell, one lap of the track, Belgium versus Australia. Inside the last lap, it could be a world championship on the track. We are five riders for the sprint. And they're going right up the banking. Uh, Matty Heyman comes down, looks for the wheel there of Tom Bonin, but as they line themselves up, Bonin is in the first position. There's still a long way to go. To see Matt lead it out, and, and I kept saying, you know, he's, He's going to win, he's going to win, he's going to win. Heyman is leading out. It's Stenard around the outside. Heyman with his nose in front. Bonin is trying to challenge, but it's Matthew Heyman. It's an early birthday present. Heyman holding on. Matthew Heyman, Heyman wins. <laughs> Matthew Heyman has won. Carry Roubaix, only the second Australian ever. Unbelievable. <laughs>
for Roubaix, you know, always keep riding in Roubaix, but it's probably actually been something that I've used for my whole cycling career that um, just keep plugging away and, yeah, I guess persistence is a word that I wouldn't mind people using if they're talking about me at the end of my career that, you know, I didn't give up and, and I guess it's for guys like that now they can see that, you know, they've been close to the front themselves. If you just keep trying, who knows? Thank you.